Assalamu alaikum wa my name is John Fontaine and welcome back to another episode of the Thick of Love. We're here joined today with us in the, by the pool I should say with <laughs> Dr. Muhammad <laughs> Salah. Assalamu alaikum Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you John? Alhamdulillah. Good. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah Sheikh. Good. Subhanallah. Good. It's been a very exciting few episodes. Subhanallah. We, in the last episode we were speaking about who it is permissible to marry and not permissible to marry. Yeah, and we the preventions. <laughs> Pardon? And the preventions. Yeah, of course, the preventions as yeah. well of, you know, who you wouldn't be able to marry. But also today, I wanted to ask you, because we touched up on it towards the last uh, part of the last episode, which was we were speaking about the wali, the guardian, guardian in particular. And I wanted to ask you some of the wisdoms behind having a guardian. And... بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفاه وبعد I, I think you would agree with me as well as the viewers will find out that by nature women are more emotional than men correct? no comment <laughs> <laughs> correct or no comment? no comment <laughs> so they are the sweet part yeah. so basically when a man wants to get married he's considering a lot of things Especially in, in, in Islam. Because he's the one who's shouldering all the financial responsibility. Mm. The dowry, the house, the maintenance, mm. uh, supporting the family financially and all of that. A woman is not actually required to do any of the above. So his considerations, not only because she is pretty mm. or because she is young or because uh, he likes her. There are many, many things that will go in, in the mind of the person before actually taking the serious uh, step and proposing to her guardian mm. or asking for her hand. While, uh, by nature again, if a woman sees a nice man who's speaking very sweet to her and he's promising a lot of things, even if they're not true, she would fall in love with him, most likely. So that's why there comes the role of the guardian in order to step in and to be free from the emotional part that the woman is experiencing and to do his homework, investigating, searching the background of the person and of the family. He is the one who's going to jump around and go to the neighborhood, go to his work and inquire about him, uh, find out from his own sources about the, 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 the true nature of this person who's going to be his son-in-law who's going to marry his daughter or the, do or the girl under his guardianship. It's a big responsibility. So simply it's something, it's an advantage for women. She doesn't have to worry about that part. It is the responsibility of the ra'i. It is the responsibility of the wali or the guardian. You know, it's interesting, it's important that we see it in that way, that it's, a, it's actually a privilege of a mm -hmm. woman, you know, to have a guardian, you know, the, the, the father who loves her, you know, he has more experience, he's a lot older, he's, he's experienced many more things in life. Mm. He, can, he can kind of weigh up uh, who a man is just by looking at him almost. I have a friend of mine who owns a company and uh, one of his employees, he hooked up with his girl, with his daughter. And he showed her, you know, very nice uh, face. And he made some remarks, how much he appreciates her, how much he, he likes her, and she's the be most beautiful woman on earth. And the girl fell in love with him accordingly because he's sweet to her, okay? The father was talking to me that I don't feel good about this guy. He said, look, Muhammad, I don't mind giving my daughter off in marriage to somebody who is poor, but my instinct, I feel that this guy isn't the right person mm. and he's bluffing so subhanallah he caught him on camera stealing subhanallah. otherwise there was no way to convince his daughter that this guy is after your money after your dad's money is not after you okay so this is one incident mm. so the guy would set aside the emotions and also mm. it's not only before the wedding uh, also during the process of the wedding, uh, a person 
may convince his future wife or the bride you know since i don't have the money now i promise you once i have the money i will pay you the dowry i will take you to spain and i will take you to niagara falls and 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 hey habibi we need to record that in writing mm. who would dare to secure those rights other than the guardian mm. so how much can you afford to pay now that much and the deferred amount write down a check mm. because it's going to be a debt mm. okay and this money will go to the bride mm. not to her father nor mm. to the husband mm. that will become her position this is just one thing yeah many other commitments the stipulation of the conditions which we spoke about it before mm. okay uh, whether she needs to continue her education whether she's mm. going to be working or not uh, all of that who's mm. going to secure those rights mm. if that woman fell in love with the guy yeah. and he says everything mm. yes okay mm. no problem whatever you want yeah. to then after they get mm. married he locks her in mm. and everything evaporates all the conditions all yeah. the uh, خلاص you stuck like you with said, him. You, you mentioned this a few episodes back where you, you know when someone has that true deep love they're blinded and they're deaf and you are and me some, or and your son yeah and the, the man or the guardian you know he can look at it from an outside perspective you know he can analyze it from a logical he perspective he definitely does he definitely and, and look does look out for his, for his and daughter. his role is not over by handing over the bride or his daughter or his mm. sister mm. to the groom and say mm. enjoy it mm. Now we 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 It's did we did start to touch upon this in the last episode but we didn't get a chance to finish it but sometimes the guardian can be stubborn yeah and and uh, you know as much as they may love their daughter etc sometimes they're overprotective and there's no one good enough for their daughter mm. so what can uh, a woman do in this situation when her guardian is being overprotective and and literally they've turned down mm. three or four or five proposals sure this concept is called adl i would be more than happy to address it but before i get into it i'd like to bring to your attention that the role of the guardian mm. is not over once he hands over uh, the girl under his guardianship to her uh, husband and that's it and they close the door and it's over throughout their marriage life there are ups and downs especially in the first month and uh, the whole year as mm. a matter of fact but more specifically in the first month because two people never been together before they may they have different habits different uh, practices different traditions so they will have a lot of problems so uh, because the 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 woman is uh, by nature more emotional so she may demand divorce mm. she may call her dad and uh, mom say come and pick me up i cannot live with him the wisdom of the guardian i was talking about a wise guardian he's going to handle the situation wisely a foolish one or somebody who's not responsible mm. will say you don't know who is she and whose daughter is she mm. or if it is the mother who's handling the case he she would ask her daughter to come home immediately or will go mm. and pick her up and they will even be the husband and things of this nature but we're talking about a hus a, a wali with certain criterions with certain qualities he's a wise man he's grown up that's why he must be adult mm. not a child mm. not somebody under the age of puberty mm. somebody with experience mm. so now to come to your uh, question about al abd you you're saying such sweet things about the guardian and his responsibilities and that's why Allah appointed them as in a charge for the family and on those who are under his guardianship but what if he's not up to the responsibility and that happens a lot somebody who doesn't want to give his daughter in marriage to somebody who is religious why because he himself is not religious he drinks he doesn't pray mm. and mashallah John is wearing beard and he's a person who prays on a regular basis and he goes and he proposes to his daughter so he says we don't have any women for marriage get out mm. why he didn't even consult his daughter why because he doesn't want anyone religious in the house mm. that is called abd mm. he's preventing his daughter from marrying the right person mm. or who could be the right person mm. does it mean that allah the almighty gave him the right to be a dictator of course not mm. no one can say that the almighty allah is the most fair he's al adl so what is it if a person abuses his role he loses it mm. 
Okay. If the guardian misuses the power of authority that Allah gave him, then he loses it. Yani. So who, who gets that responsibility after that? The guardians in order is the father of the woman. Mm -hmm. And if he's not there, does she have a grandfather? Then he's number two in order. Mm -hmm. Well, father and grandfather are dead. Or they're not Muslims. So the son, mm -hmm. women who are married, their son, and then their sons grow up. And now she's a widow or divorced and she wants to get married. Her son can give her in marriage as a wali. Mm. So it's also always the male guardi guardian. The because of what we the find... The hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, لا تزوج المرأة نفسها ولا تزوج المرأة المرأة. A woman should not give herself mm. in marriage, nor should she give another woman in marriage. Mm. See, this is, this is important because I've, I've, I've actually witnessed this a lot, especially in the West, where maybe the father has passed away or the mother has, has divorced the father so the, the the guardian is not around mm. and then the mother of of the bride will, mm. will will step in to be the guardian is this permissible no there is an order and no mm. one can skip it even if the couple mm. are separated not mm. because they're separated mm. the mother uh, would just skip the mm. order and would give her daughter in marriage or even ask her brother who will be the girl's maternal uncle mm. to give her in marriage no mm. the father is there and he fulfilled the condition. He is a Muslim, wise, practicing person. Mm. Alhamdulillah. And mm. he is not mu'dal. Mm. Some people just say no for the sake of saying no. They want to hurt, uh, yeah. you know, because they're separated. Mm. Okay, I'm not giving your daughter in marriage. She's also your daughter. Mm. Are you out of your mind? But, you know, stubbornness. Yeah. So if the person is abusing this power of authority, it will be withdrawn from him. Mm. To be given to the next in order. Mm. Then the brother... Okay? Yeah. If we don't have any of those, any of the above, then we look for the judge, we look for the governor, mm. we look for the imam of the masjid if we live yeah. in a non-Muslim community. Mm. So the imam of the Islamic center can play that role. Jazakallah khair. We're just going to take a short break and I want to revisit that, that point after the break, inshallah. Stay tuned and we'll be back straight after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum salah. Welcome back to the Fiqh of Love. My name is John Fontaine and we're here with Dr. Muhammad Salah. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shaykh, we've been discussing the role of the guardian and also, subhanAllah, when the guardian is, we were just mentioning just before the break, uh, because sometimes it's quite common, especially what I've witnessed in the West, where sometimes there's no reason for the guardian not to accept or even entertain uh, a proposal so I just want to revisit that um, and as I said what you, you mentioned that if he doesn't uh, you know fulfill take, his duty from, yeah, if he doesn't fulfill it then it would if actually he doesn't shoulder his responsibilities yeah. then we'll skip him to the next yeah. in order yeah if there is no next in order of the whole family is messed up that happens mm. You know, especially in the West, mm. you, you can find mm. things of that nature. So then you so the father says no, and mm. the brother says no, and the son says no. Mm. Why? Because they don't want this guy, because he, he mm. looks religious. Mm. So okay. then you mentioned that you'd now start to look for a judge, or uh, if yeah. he's in the West, you'd look for the local imam, maybe, or someone trustworthy. Like this that. is what the, uh, you know, the right order of fiqh says. Mm. So, al-qadi al-Muslim, the Muslim judge. Mm. We don't have a Muslim judge. You cannot just go to the court and say, Your Honor, I want you to give me off in marriage to... He doesn't have time for that. So if, if we have in the Muslim community the Imam who is really up to the responsibility of not just leading the prayer and giving mm. some talks here and there, but also looking after the entire community. Mm. So a girl can go to him and say, Sheikh or Sheikh, you know, I like this guy, but I don't know how to tell him. You know, it will be so beautiful mm. for the imam to feel that he's like a father mm. for the community. Mm. So he would communicate on her behalf mm. to that person. Mm. And would also do his homework as a guardian to investigate and look uh, for the background of, uh, yeah. you know, the, of that person to decide whether he's fit or not. 
the father is running a gas station is selling liquor and beer and uh, anyone who comes to me he doesn't want anyone to tell him that halal and haram you're gonna give me a headache so that's why anyone who's good proposes to his daughter said no 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 and kick them mm -hmm. out before they would even step in I have seen things like that so what about the Imam he's authoritative he's been given this authority mm -hmm. you know what I have many sisters reverts who have been my students for a while and then they ask me to be their guardian and I only have one condition number one because they don't have a, a, a Muslim family member to look after them and one of the conditions of the guardianship is Islam mm. okay Allah says see this I wanted to ask you about this Allah, mm. because there's many reverts to Islam sisters and, and they have like Christian fathers or atheist fathers we said before the guardian is supposed to look for the best interest mm. of the girl who's under his guardianship so do you think that a, a non-muslim guardian would like John to marry his daughter or to like a person who is Muslim and practicing Muslim to marry his daughter he Ma may maybe someone he, like he, me uh, he would <laughs> 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 we need a person who yeah. look for the best interest mm. of the girl or the woman yeah. So, so I, 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 Islamic, uh, I have a condition belief. whenever some sister asks me for that. I say, on one condition, I have to function as a full guardian. So if, if, if you find a guy whom you want to marry and I, I try to uh, check out his background and I find that he's not fit, even if you like him, I would say no. Mm. Not adl, but because before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you laid a huge responsibility on my shoulders. For instance, once uh, one of my students uh, wanted to marry a girl whom she got to know online, and she said he's a practicing Muslim and so on, and she's a revert. So when he came to meet me, and that was in the UK, um, I asked him, what does he do for a living? He said, nothing, mm. it doesn't work. Then I asked him, why not? The, you know what kind of degree do you have mm -hmm. he didn't even finish his uh, high school diploma mm -hmm. so how do you live he said my family support me and you know how it is in the UK a lot of people live on welfare and so on the girl is working the girl is learning and she has achieved a lot I in sure. respect of uh, reading Quran learning the day and studying Arabic and she's working and supporting herself all mm -hmm. by herself so I said and who's going to support the other uh, you know what he said? He said, well, Allah will provide for us. Sheikh, you said that a few episodes back. You said that it will increase your risk, right? Yeah, Allah will increase your risk when you're hard working, when you're serious. Yeah. But when you're 30, 32, 35, mm -hmm. never taking a job in your life, <laughs> when are you going to start working? When you're enjoying the free ride, just staying at home <laughs> you, you've already reached <laughs> half of your age supposedly you've yeah. never taken a job you did not wash yeah. dishes you did not drive a cab you did not work in the construction i mean if you're not a doctor mm. uh, if you're not a dentist if you're mm. not a teacher then you gotta do something else you be a handyman yeah. you know when you're showing interest and you're making an effort yeah. allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will find way for you but when you are lazy yeah. and lousy well, I, I don't think I would be happy to uh, give you my daughter in marriage mm. because you're not really making, mm. you're going to be a liability. So mm. I used to feed my daughter and now I have to feed you as well. Mm. <laughs> you know, you, you have no source of income. You never had a source of yeah. income. When are you planning to work? He said, Allah will provide for us. Well, even though the statement itself is correct, mm. Allah provides mm. for everyone. Allah, who are razaq wa quwwat al mateen. But the context, was not the right context mm. i'm asking you a legitimate question mm. how are you going to provide for my daughter mm. this is very common in the uk where people are living on benefits or off benefits i should say you know they, they rely Actually, on that. They're in, not in, in every meeting uh, i have with the youth whether in uk or in the countries where they live on benefits i urge them to go out to work to continue their education mm. to get a degree to, to desire to be doctors and engineers and lawyers and uh, to have a career, mm. not just to sit back and uh, enjoy the benefits. That is not fair. Mm. Sheikh, I have, um, 
you might find this question a bit funny, but it's quite common in certain cultures where even the son or the, the, the man would, would not marry without the permission of his mother, mm. you know, or his father. It's almost like his, his parents are guardians of him as well. What would you say about this, you know? Well, from a technical point of view, he doesn't need the consent of the guardian, mm. okay? He's responsible enough. Mm. But what kind of a person who would go and propose to a girl without taking his family with him, without having his parents with him? He's proud to have such parents. And as I said before so many times, it is not a man and a woman just getting married. It's merging two families. Mm. You know, if a, if a man proposes to my daughter and he's coming by himself, the first question I'm going to ask, so are your parents living? Oh, yeah, they're cool. They're living, alhamdulillah. What are they? Well, I didn't tell them yet. Well, go and tell them. Mm. Inform them. Mm. They have a right upon you. You have to share with them the decision mm. and also share with them making the decision. Mm. They got to like my daughter. They're going to see her. Mm. They're going to help you making the decision. Subhanallah, we spoke about istishara, which is, uh, you know, consulting mm. people. So would you consult your colleagues, your friends, your cousins, and not consult your parents? Mm. Not introduce his, uh, your parents to the uh, future in-laws? Mm. That is not right. That is not right mm. at all. Mm. Okay? Yeah. So, you know, we, we spoke about, subhanAllah, you know, the legal preventions, you know, also... Uh, that the, the woman must get approval by the guardian. What other uh, conditions are there are needed for the nikah? Uh, the ijab and qabul. Now we're talking about the pillars mm. of the marriage contract. The consent of the guardian, the witnesses, and ijab and qabul. Mm. Ijab and qabul, ijab means the proposal. You show interest in marrying by saying, would you marry me? But in this case, if you're proposing to a girl, you ask her guardian, I'm interested in marrying your daughter. Mm. The guardian have already asked the girl and she's interested. So he is speaking on her behalf. Yes, I will give you my daughter in marriage. Then the guy says, I accept. Okay? Mm. On what condition? We've agreed to a certain dowry. Now we'll discuss the dowry in a, a separate uh, episode, inshallah, how much more or less, you know, and the value, prison and deferred. But now I'm talking about, so we agreed that we'll pay dowry. Yeah. And we agreed to all kind of conditions and where is she going to live, what kind of income you're making and all yeah. of that. So beforehand, you have all of that in, in mind and the guardian have done his homework and he informed his daughter and mm. she's very happy and she's very convinced and she says daddy go ahead so she gave mm. him the green light mm. without her giving him the green light there is no marriage contract mm. that is called qabul mm. so ijab is the proposal mm. qabul is the agreement mm. or the acceptance yeah okay so you know the prophet sallallahu mm. alaihi wasallam said uh mm. you know girls are by nature mm. they're shy I'm talking about Muslim girls. Mm. You know, maybe there are non-Muslim girls who are shy as well. But I'm talking about in Islam, a Muslim girl should feel shy. Mm. Okay? So when the father asks her, somebody is asking for your hand. I uh, checked out his background and, mm. and, and or she already knows him. So she lowers her head. Mm. Not saying anything is a sign of consent. Mm. But if she's not interested, no, daddy, no way. I don't like him. I mm. don't want to marry that guy. I, he would be the last person in the world. Khalas, it's over. Mm. But you would not give your daughter in marriage or a girl who's under your guardianship mm. in marriage without her consent. So mm. the pillars of the aqd, ijab mm. and qabul, proposal mm. and acceptance. From the girl. As From well. the girl. Yeah. So there's and no forced marriage in Islam. Her I'm sorry? There's no forced marriage in Islam. Of this is a misconception not. that is often of course not. Uh, promoted. When we, yeah. when we uh, process the marriage contract, so who is sitting with the groom? Mm. The guardian. And he says, yeah, my daughter says yes. We'll go and check and ask her. Mm. She shows her ID. And yes, mm. I'm interested in marrying him. Mm. Okay? Yeah. Or... She's quiet. She doesn't say anything because she's, she, she's 
shy as the Prophet sallallahu said وَإِذْنُهَا صُمَاتُهَا being quiet is a sign of approval but to give her in marriage without her consent or without her knowledge or any of that whether to your cousin or somebody whom you think he is the best of the best no that is not permissible Jazakallah khair Sheikh that's, we all, that's all we have time for today and hopefully inshallah next episode we can pick up where we left off True. and carry on speaking about these details inshallah yeah, Allah bless you so for those of you at home we ask you to keep following the series I hope you're enjoying it the fiqh of love join us next time for another episode Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh